I bet the Aegis counts towards, like, not having a death, too. So if Ursa had, like, actually gotten the Roshan that picks up the Aegis, like, he's most definitely the hero that dies last. Oh, oh CC. CC. Yeah. All right, I lost. There goes <laughs> I picked down. the Timber Saw. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you already did lose, huh? All right, my boy Ursa, Algadon. Never heard of. Of course, out the time walk. Yeah, I mean that's that's what you have to do. Here. Yeah. The Ursa is not going to get. He's not going to get three pumps. Hitting the. Yeah, and now it's too late. Cause all right, jump a little bit farther. All right, CC. He's just getting distance at this point. Eventually, that relocate's right, gonna wear out. And they, he's, good. he's just giving up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now he turns around. We have Chronosphere Sunray on top of both of them. They're gonna lose Algodon, who no one has that Aegis. Isco is also gonna get caught off. Looks like he tried to go for the swap, maybe save the Ursa, but in the end, he is just another body. The pyre. We have uh some spirit playing around with the Timbersaw up top. I think either of these heroes sent to win a team fight perhaps. It's as is. Even if they try and engage, they're still going to be the supernova that kind of guarantees when they get to the fight Now they're going to jump in, try and grab Visa, they're going to try and pop him, actually controlling MGW and killing him instead. Visa managed to get off his ultimate, they're going to get a lot of damage on the Volta here, there's the supernova, they're going to be able to turn around and pop it. That being said, Visa gets the opportunity to just right click down the Ursa, happy with the one kill, now trying to escape, but it looks like DDX is going to be able to run him down and Volta in a very successful hold against FDL. Granted, they lost their melee racks before. Oh, you Rage take racks. that! You definitely take that, <laughs> because they had already lost. On DDX, or excuse me, on Visa, at top lane. DDX waiting in the wings. It was a bit of a mistake out of FDL, but this time they do have the chrono. They got more Oh, they see him. They've caught, uh, they've caught Visa. They're going to be able to lock him down with the Orchid, and that is a free kill on the carry. That being said, Faces Void is going to be able to come in, manage to get the chrono sphere. DDX runs into it. They do manage to pop the Wisp. Now the question of time lock, he gets that too, so that's going to be two kills. They do manage to keep the Storm Spirit alive, but one for two for the main carry of FDL. That's not and really a that bad. And a Chrono used. And a Chrono used. That is not bad whatsoever from Volter, especially since he's like on the Courier. That is a completed Soul Booster. So he probably will have Bloodstone before the next attempt at high ground by FDL, which is probably in five minutes' time after the Aegis runs out. So maybe if they get a really good pick. Toon God, they're going to be able to burst him down rather easily. It looks like the Wisp is unable to save him on time with the relocate. Algodon pushing himself forward here. He's going to go for the Phoenix right away. Forcing out that Acorus dive. Now the long jump in from DDX, who controls up Stan King first. But unfortunately, they get caught by the Chronosphere. Supernova's going to successfully explode. Stan King gets the three-man stun. And it all turns so wrong for Volter, just as they thought they had a hold on this game. FDL, they shut it down, and now our Wisp and Ursa are going to be two looking at a couple trying to escape, but that's just not going to happen. Algodon is going to be caught in, and our Wisp no longer has that relocate. In fact, he's even going to be caught as well. Gets the Yule Scepter, holding him in place long enough for the rest of the team to follow through, and that is going to be a second lane of Rax as Volter, they were spending their gold, so they actually do not have the buybacks to be able to defend this one. Yeah, I mean, the, the great equal. Yeah, it'll completely halt the single target burst that Volter are looking for between the Storm Sphere and, and then and the, the moment a Chronosphere gets, gets put out with the follow up. Just like this, Algonon, he tries to go for CC, now going to be controlled up and actually just loses his life as the blink in for the Timbers on. Now they're going to be able to get the Faces Void Chrono as well. Might save Franz's life. Now he's going to dive to the Orchid, but still, it doesn't matter. That's definitely going to win the fight for them. They clean up the Wisp to make sure there's no escape on these heroes with the relocate. They're going to leave the course for last. DDX, probably the one to be able to escape here as he does have enough mana it seems to make the long jump away, but it doesn't matter. The GG call will come first. Volter Gaming. We'll end up losing this game at 26 minutes to FDL. Yeah. Um, FDL continues their... Uh, ...looking pretty good after they beat Complexity. But, um... 
you know, we we spend a lot of time bagging on uh, Voltour and Drinking Boys, but uh, they looked a lot better here. Um, I, you know, I hope they they learn a, a, a lesson in these qualifiers and realize, mm -hmm. hey, if you stay together, you can, and, and you learn together, there's, there's an opportunity for you to grow and play better teams. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys, we are going to be taking a break. Uh, very short break, though, because they're just trying to push the games forward as fast as possible. Our next game is going to be Drinking Boys. We've talked a little bit about them already on this cast. Uh, they're going to be facing up against the second qualifier team of Void Boys. So that'll be Charlie and myself. Hope you guys will stick around and enjoy the cast.